بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد يا حبيبي في الله because we live in a time of great fitna a time of struggle a time of controversy a time of many people declaring one another to be innovators, declaring one another to be disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, declaring people and one another to be deviant from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It's imperative to look at some of the origins of where this fitna began in early Islamic history. That a lot of these controversies are not new unfortunately to Islam meaning that there was a group and many groups and sects that departed from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and departed from the creed of Islam that the Prophet that was derived from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and codified by the Salaf of this Ummah in the books of Aqeedah or Aqaid and the early books regarding Islam and one of those sects which we feel the harm of today is the Khawarij. And we're going to talk in the most general terms about some of the characteristics in the Khawarij. And I'm going to use as a reference a book entitled Firq Al Firq Fil Aqidah. And this was a small risala, really a summary by one of our teachers, Sheikh Ibrahim Ibn Rafi' al-Ghamidi in Jidda, who is a teacher at Merkaz Ta'lim Kitab Sunnah. And this is a little risala that he uh, really made a, a summary, a concise summary about some of the groups and it was taken from another risala from one of the professors, Sheikh, um, uh, one of the mashayikh at Ummul Qura University who did a nice book on Firq. And very briefly for those who are unaware of the Khawarij, Al Khawarij Alam ala firqa alati tu kafr al muslimin wa tastahamalu dima'ahum bi mujarrad al ma'asi wa ya farq minha a ghali wa ghayr. The Khawarij ahabati fillah, they are a sect or a group, this is the original Khawarij, that declared other Muslims to be disbelievers in Allah due to their sins or what they perceived as sins and what they perceived as uh, deviation and they began their activity or movement or it, it comes from as some of the ulama point out from Dhu Khawaisara, who was from the tribe Bani Tamim, and he was around during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was distributing some, I believe it was war booty, and Dhu Khawaisara was there, and he said, Adaliya Muhammad. He said, O Muhammad, be just. He said this to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is the most just of human beings, alayhi salatu wasalam. He's the best example because Allah subhanahu wa taala chose him 
as the final messenger to mankind to bring the message of Tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And so Dhul Khawaisara said this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu he stood up and he said Da'ani ya Rasulullah aqtul hadha al-munafiq O Rasulullah give me permission to cut the head of this munafiq, this hypocrite that he said this about you Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet sallallahu said, no, leave him, because we don't want the people to say that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was killing his companions. That he was like this, a bloodthirsty person. And this shows us the difference with the people of today who don't care about human life at all. Plant life, animal life, any life they destroy it in the name of whatever they believe. But the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a mercy for mankind. And so the Prophet ﷺ said about Dhul Khawaisara, he said, this man and his companions are, will come from him, those who read the Quran. And the Quran will not exit their throats they will enter the religion as the arrow enters its prey or its target and they will leave the religion likewise. This was the case of Dhul Khawaisara and the description of how the Khawarij began. The Prophet Sallallahu said in another narration, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar, the Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. And there's other narrations pertaining to the Khawarij. But in keeping brief, just so we are aware of some of the characteristics of the Khawarij, and note that they fought Sahaba and killed Sahaba, it is said that the killer of Uthman and the one who encouraged that, that they were Khawarij. And the killer of Ali ibn Abi Talib, and radiallahu ta'ala an Uthman bin Affan was also killed by the Khawarij showing that they did not regard the blood of the Muslims even though as many of the ulama say they are from the Muslims but they are deviant so one of the characteristics we should be aware is that the Khawarij are extreme. Extreme in their interpretation and they possess ignorance. And that they accuse Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu of not ruling by the Quran because he wanted to arbitrate. He used men to arbitrate uh, in uh, a dispute he had with Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Khawarij used Nasus from the Quran. They said, in the Hukum Lillah, which is truth. So here they use something, they use truth to propagate falsehood. And so this is something we have to realize, Ahabatifillah, that this is not something new. You will find the people who defend battle and falsehood and extremism and killing human life, taking human life, even though Allah says that human life it is as if you killed all of mankind when you've killed someone unjustly. But those people will take some of the verses and apply it in accordance with their desires, to saying to take people's lives, to kill people, to shed the blood of the children of Adam. And this is what the original Khawarij, what they inherited from the original Khawarij. So the Khawarij, what are some of the characteristics? Let's make this so that we learn something. The Khawarij uh, were, and those who followed them inherited extremism. So they were extreme during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. They were extreme in that they were killing the Sahaba and making takfir of them, saying that they did not judge by the Book of Allah. Isn't this what the modern day takfiris say about all the governments? 
there's no Muslim governments or they say this these ones don't rule by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule they claim that about Saudi which is probably the most adherent place in the world today to the Sharia and has stability the prayer is established as you hear the Adhan right now but yet they declare the leaders to be non-Muslims and they declare the soldiers to be halal for them to kill to blow themselves up and kill them at checkpoints and all the other extremism this is what the modern day tekfiris do which is they are uh, they inherited their some of their creed from the original Qadis. So some of these other characters, we said extremism, we said also ignorance, in that their istinbat, their use of the evidence is from the Quran and sometimes from the Sunnah. The original Qadis were known for rejecting the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ because they took the ayats and they may, basically had their own tafsir. And they rejected the tafsir of those who were around during the revelation, which were the Sahaba تعالى, to such an extent that they made takfir of them, declared them disbelievers in Allah, and killed them and fought them. So ignorance and extremism are characteristics that you find from the original Khwarij and the neo takfiris possess this. One of the, uh, just to be very brief because it's time for the prayer uh, and we'll look at just one of the sects of the Khawarij, one of the, some of their main Aqidah points uh, for one they made takfir of Uthman wa Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhumah they made takfir of the Murtaqiba Kabir Kabira Murtaqibu Kabira wa takhliduhu finnar so they made takfir, they declared those people who did major sins to be disbelievers and they said that they would be in the hellfire. So when you say someone's a disbeliever, that means of course that they'll never come out of the fire, that they'll be in the hellfire forever. May Allah protect us and our families from this. And our non-Muslim families, may Allah guide them to Islam, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and die upon that Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. A third characteristic is they made takfir men khalafuhum min al muslimin Bel, men lem yuhajir ilayhim walau kana ala madhabihim. This is imperative. Now we're talking about the Azadika. This is one of the most extreme sects of the early Khawarij. So one of the characteristics they possessed is they, they possessed was that they made takfir. They declared uh, those who disagreed with them from the Muslims to be disbelievers. To such an extent that those people who did not make hijrah to them in their place, even if they were on their medheb, they were considered disbelievers. That's the Izarika. Do we see commonality with some of the neo tekfiri groups today? I would say yes. We saw that in the, I believe in the in the 70s and the 80s, from group, groups like Jamaat Tekfiri wa Hijra in Egypt. We see that also from Faraj from Faraj, Afwan Faraj, who was the leader, uh, one of the predecessors of Jamaat Takfir wa Hijra and one of the ones who killed Sadat. And we see that from those who followed him, some aspects of that. But they were some of the most extreme of the modern day groups who basically said, if you don't make Hijra to us, you're not in our land. They used to have encampments in Egypt you know, places they would go to the mountains and they would tell the women to leave their families and make hijra to them. In a place like Egypt, which we consider a Muslim country, without a, with all of its shortcomings. If you didn't make hijra to them and leave your family, you were considered a non-Muslim. You considered, and it was considered Dar al-Harb. This is how they, this, this is how the Ta'wil facet, this is from Jahil and extremism and where it leads you. This is from more modern day groups. And this is exactly the madhab of the Azaraka, one of the original Khwarij sects, who said that if you didn't make hijra to them, even if you believed like them, you were a disbeliever. And Imam, uh, uh, Imam Abu, ha Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari says in his book, uh, Al-Islamiyin, I forget the name of the text, uh, which is about sect, sectarianism one of the early books on sectarianism and he mentioned about the Azarika 
that they were so extreme that they used to make takfir on themselves that he quoted some statements of them saying that what, until we make hijra from the land that we're in now, we are disbelievers. How extreme and how almost, uh, you can see, a loss of intellect that they had. And this is what we see some characteristics in some of these modern day groups. And we mentioned they made takfir of those who disagreed with them. Don't we see this from, look at this characteristics now we see from the group ISIS and ISIL and whatever they want to call themselves now, uh, IS, Islamic Sharia. They declare those people who fight them and make their blood lawful, even if they share a very close minhaj. Look at Al Nasra. Al Nasra and ISIS were fighting one another, killing one another, making takfir of one another. Why? You differed with me. You didn't want to take the bay'ah to me. You don't take the bay'ah to me, I'm having your head. This is in essence what they say. This is what we see as a commonality with the original Khawarij. Another characteristic is that those people who differed with him, their whole ballad was considered, uh, even if they were Muslim, was considered Dar al Kufr, the land of disbelief. And had a different hukum, a different ruling on how they would deal with that, aside from fighting them, of course. So meaning, if you differ with my ideology, then I'm going to fight you. This is how those original sect, the original Azarika, part of their belief, they were some of the most extreme of the Khawarij. And I just want you to think and reflect about some of the events that are going on now today, and what we will see tomorrow, and reflect about <coughs> these characteristics. When you see this in an individual, avoid him. When you see he's busy with his tongue is moist on declaring other people to be disbelievers, especially in this, because it's so serious, then avoid this person and avoid their extremism. And if necessary, speak to the elders in the community to get this individual away from the youth especially. So, O oh, youth of Islam, beware the extremism of takfir and tabdir, of declaring people innovators. If you don't have the right to zuzu, you don't have the knowledge. Takfir is from the religion. Do not underestimate, do not uh, misinterpret what I'm saying. Takfir, according to conditions, according to the madhab of Ahl Sunnah, and according to the Muslims in general, uh, even the most, even except probably Murjia, people who have irja to the extreme vision, most even Sufis and, and even Sufi scholars of the past and many sects, they made takfir, meaning that they use those, those conditions that if someone does certain actions that are like disbelieving in Allah, even if they say la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, if they declare the shahada, but they worship the grave, for example, or they sacrifice animals to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they, uh, you know, share in worship with other faiths, you know, they believe that Islam and Buddhism is true, Islam and Catholicism is true, you know, they, they go they go to the priest, priest one day, and they go to the, go to, go to the uh, masjid another day, believing in that way, then this takes a person out of the fold of Islam. There are sins that take a person out of the fold of Islam. But as far as declaring that person a disbeliever, you leave this for the people of knowledge. You leave that for Ahl al You leave that for the judges, the Islamic Sharia judges, and the ulama of Islam. Not for you and I just to engage taking this one out of Islam and taking that one out of Islam for something that we see or we believe about them. Ahabatifillah, beware innovated madhabs in the Prophet ﷺ said, If tarakat al Yahud ala ihtu wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakat al Nasara ala thinatain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hadi umma ala talata wa sab'in firqa, kullaha finna ala la wahida, kulla men hiya ya Rasulullah, kala men kana ala mithu ma kana alayhi wa ashabi al yum. The Prophet ﷺ said the Jews were breaking the 71 sects, uh, the Christians in the 72 sects, my umma in the 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one, they said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon today. 
Meaning if you want to be saved, you want to escape the hellfire, and all of us want to escape the hellfire, and may Allah guide us all to be those who escape from the hellfire and avoid the hellfire. Avoid sectarianism. That's one of the ways. Avoid sectarianism. Tamasik bi kitabi Allah wa sunnatu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. Adhere to the Quran, adhere to the sunnah, adhere to the methodology of the salaf of this ummah, the early classical scholars. And this you'll find safety in your religion. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.